May 16th through 19th, 2017 produced several rounds of severe thunderstorms across the region. On May 16th, the Severe Prediction Center issued a moderate risk of thunderstorms in the western side of Oklahoma and the eastern side of the Texas Panhandle. With that moderate risk, they issued a 15% chance hatched for strong to violent tornadoes. At 1.50 p.m., the Severe Prediction Center issued a particularly dangerous situation tornado watch with a high likelihood of tornadoes and a high likelihood of those tornadoes being strong, significant EF2 plus tornadoes. Here is how that day unfolded for me. I started my day near McLean, Texas. Whoa. By the time I had gotten there, there was already a tornado worn storm down by Howard Wick, Texas. I chose a south option that in hindsight was not necessarily the best. One, it was dirt. Two, there was no good east roads from that road. Once I got to this spot, there was a jagged, rotating wall cloud twisting slowly across the rolling fields of grass. I was hoping that the storm would produce a tornado in this very spot, considering it was very, very good terrain and there was no buildings in sight. I thought the storm was going to produce right as it crossed the road, but it ended up producing about a mile or two after it did. I was trying so hard to get back north to get in front of the storm that I missed an opportunity to watch an amazing tornado. I should have not been so greedy and just pulled over right there and gotten the low contrast view of the tornado. Apparently it was on the ground for 20 minutes and it produced a beautiful elephant trunk. Once I got back to Interstate 40 in McLean, I had a decision to make. Either stay with the storm and see what it does, or head down to the more isolated storm heading towards Sayre, Oklahoma. I thought about it for a few minutes and decided to try to get in front of the storm that was heading towards Sayre, Oklahoma. The storm was tornado warned and rotating very strongly. I thought for sure it was going to put down a tornado right in front of me at this point. As I neared Carter, Oklahoma, I spotted a tornado. Periodically, you can see ground circulations of dust around the base of the tornado. As I was driving through Carter, briefly, you could get glimpses of the tornado and you could tell that it was intensifying. As I came out on the other side of town, it appeared that a large tornado was trying to form.
when I got to a spot I was happy with, it seemed like the storm was really getting its act together. Rain curtains were wrapping around the mesocyclone. A big bull-shaped funnel was beginning to reach towards the ground. Every once in a while, you could see little condensed funnel fingers licking the ground. Then, to my left, appeared to be a very wet RFD to my dismay. This tornado that would have likely been photogenic was about to get enshrouded in rain. I did not feel comfortable enough to proceed through the RFD, considering I could not likely see what was on the other side. I then turned around and blasted south and planned to move east in an attempt to get back in front of the storm. The next best north option was Highway 6. To my left, you could see the area wrapped in rain where the tornado likely still was. Turns out there was still a tornado in that area, and it later tracked through Elk City, Oklahoma, killing one man and damaging or destroying multiple homes. In one more attempt to get close, I did end up entering the RFD for a short time. Considering, though, how bad visibility was, I decided to cut back east and exit the RFD. My thoughts and prayers go out to the families affected by the tornado that went through Elk City. On my next episode, I will be covering the May 18th High Risk Day. That well, was a frustrating chase.